Okay. Looks like I'm on. We'll wait for some people to join us as I continue to things out of my arsenal. Hi, Melinda. Hi, Deborah, Melanie, Elker. <clears throat> hello, 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 everybody. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, this is not going to be a long video and still I, until I started to pull things out of my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anne Marie. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to get started here because we really don't have a lot of time. I have to take um, Xavier back to his dad's house. So we're going to make this kind of quick, hopefully. I really don't have an order per se, but I did make a list of things um, somewhere. My little list. Okay. So, um, I get a lot of questions from you guys asking me to try, um, different products that come out on the market. And, um, sometimes I think they're great and I invest in them. Like this purple tape is pretty cool. Um, and sometimes I'm like, man, I'm not going to waste my money on that. So I wanted to talk about pretty much my must have items for stamping card making. Um, so I'm just going to start with basics. All right. So the, the first one I'm going to start with just to get things off the desk here are scissors. I know this sounds very simple, um, but you need a good pair of scissors. I think we all start out with the standard pair of scissors thinking scissors are scissors, but no, no, no. All scissors are not created equal. Um, so I will recommend that you do invest in good pairs of scissors. Now, that being said, you don't need six pairs of the same scissors. Okay. So hi, Stephanie. <clears throat> so, um, Yes, I have like 50 million pairs of scissors. Again, I've been doing this for 15 years now. So unfortunately, I do have a lot of scissors. Um, so the scissors that I would recommend that I really have, have reached for the most are these Tim Holtz scissors. I understand he did come out with a new set. But I have put these scissors through the ringer and they are still very sharp. They cut very nicely. <coughs> and... You know, they're just, they're easy to hold. You know, they're just really, really good scissors. So those are my like all purpose cut everything scissors. Then I have several of these cutter bee scissors and I don't know why I have so many. They're just really good scissors. They have sharp tips and I think I just buy them because new scissors are pretty. I don't know. But these are really, really good for fussy cutting. And then you should have, <clears throat> which I don't have a pair dedicated to ribbon so that they are always sharp and they're always able to cut your ribbon without fraying them. I don't really have that. I just use other scissors. So I would say recommend, I recommend you have two pairs of scissors. I don't think you need any more than that. Um, I would say, like I said, a, a good pair of either the cutter bees or something with a very sharp point. I have these other ones. I think these are tonic scissors. These guys here. Um, and then a pair of these Tim Holtz shears scissors. So you don't need 18 pairs of scissors, but <clears throat> two good pairs of scissors. You do need a good pair of scissors. Okay. So <clears throat> that's first on my list. Um, I no longer buy the decorated scissors 
They were cool back in the day when we were all scrapbooking and cutting out our own scalloped edges and things like that. Don't buy them. You're not going to use them. Don't bother. Okay. Don't buy anything that you think you're going to use. Know that you're going to use it. Otherwise, you're going to fill your room with scrap stuff and you're going to have a big yard sale and you're going to sell crap because you never used it. All right. Um, second thing is a good trimmer. This is pr this should have been number one, actually. A good trimmer. You need two sizes of trimmers. Again, you don't need six trimmers like Nancy has. I should have made this video for myself 10 years ago. Okay, so I think everybody kind of starts out with this sliding trimmer. And don't get me wrong, it's a very good trimmer. It got me through a lot of crafting supplies, okay? However, what ends up happening is the trimmer blades get dull, the little track gets dull, and then you get frayed edges when you're cutting your paper. And when you get frayed edges, especially when you're cutting your own card stock, um, it just takes away from your card because, you know, we don't always want that kind of frayed edge look. You always want a crisp, clean line. So when, you're, when your blades aren't cutting straight, you want to make sure you're replacing your, your blades and you also want to replace your guides. A lot of these trimmers have guides in them. I like a trimmer big like this so you can cut 12 by 12 paper down. So I do recommend at least having one trimmer that can cut down 12 by 12 paper. Um, but then you also want to have a smaller trimmer that can cut your 6 by 6 paper down. Um, this guy I thought was cool, again, because it had the changeable edges. Um, I never use it. It doesn't hold my paper. Um, the edging, I just don't use it. So this was a waste of money. Um, this little guy I used to take with me on crops all the time. Um, but since I started to get into the Tim Holtz trimmers, I love this trimmer. I use this trimmer all the time for everything. Most of the time, everything is pretty straight. Um, I know a lot of people are afraid to use the guillotine trimmer. That's fine. Um, but once you get used to using it, I put mine away so the kids don't touch it. I just, I can't imagine cutting anything without this trimmer. Um, I also have a very large 12 by 12 tonic trimmer under my desk. So I had, do have the big boy of trimmers under the desk there. Okay. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about adhesive. Okay. So when I started out with scrapbooking and stamping, probably like many of you, I had a stamp runner. Here we go. This is the one I used all the time. And I used um, removable stamp runner. I are glue glue runner. I use permanent glue runner. You know, we, we have these from Stampin' Up. So you can buy these from Elmer's. Um, so then I got into this guy here, which is the one that I used to use all the time. But honestly, I've just moved to glue now. Um, I will recommend this Tombow Extreme runner. And I will tell you, you want this for very hard to stick down items, heavier papers and card stocks, um, specialty paper like foils and vellums and things like that. It's just super strong, worth it. I pull it out every once in a while when I have something that's just, I need that extra stick to it. You guys have all had projects where you've stuck it down and it's come unglued. Not going to happen with this stuff. All right. So I do recommend this, but for the most part, all I really use now is glue. The two that I reach for are the art glitter glue. And this was recommended by you guys, my viewers, and I use it all the time. And this art glitter glue comes in several different sizes. You can get two ounces, four ounces, six ounces, or eight ounces, I don't know, and a refill bottle. <clears throat> and I like this glue because it dries very quick, quickly. It dries clear and it dries quickly. So it doesn't warp your paper. It doesn't cause wrinkles in anything. And it just goes down quick like white glue. There's no weird smell to it. And I am addicted to this glue. Now I have tried other glues. I went on with this fad. I went on with this fad, you know, and guys, I don't use these anymore. I only use 
the art glitter glue and it's because of how quickly it dries. Now, <clears throat> if you are new to crafting, you might want to go with the mono liquid glue because this gives you a second. It still dries clear, um, but it has basically where you can let it dry and it gets tacky. But um, if you need an extra minute or two to move your paper around, that's when I grab this paper. When you have something and you're not quite sure of the placement, you don't want it to dry immediately, that's when I go to the mono glue. Okay. Hi, Linda. Hi, Tony. Okay. Um, how about we talk about something very simple. Erasers. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but you want to have good erasers in your desk. So I have this eraser, which just looks like a pencil. But this is the eraser that I always have on the top of my desk, which is a mono sand eraser. This mono sand eraser, I learned about this from Jennifer McGuire. And basically, you make a mistake and it lifts it up. It, it's, it's like a file for your paper. It just lightly sands whatever that mistake is off of the top layer of your paper there and helps to hide it. It's not going to make it perfect, but it really does help to kind of camouflage and hide it. And I think just having a good eraser in your stash never hurts. Okay, um, let's talk about stamp positioners. And I'm not trying to get into any kind of arguments here. That's not what this is about. This is about recommendations for people. All right, so I have tried a lot of stamp positioners, okay? The one that I started with is the um, normal size Misty. When this came out, how many years ago? Three, four years ago now, maybe longer. Um, I thought it was very costly. It was $60 when I got it. Mine has cracked edges. Um, I'll be honest, guys, I was not real happy with the customer service when I let them know that mine had cracked edges. They basically told me, too bad, so sad. It doesn't, you know, you're, you're out of warranty, whatever it was. But I really like the ideal of the um, stamp positioner. I understand she was the first one to come out with it. She does have a genius idea here. And I did invest in the smaller one, which is the one I probably use the most, this little guy here, because it's very easy. It's card front size. And, um, you know, I just can, can use it. Now, that being said... The Tim Holtz stamp platform is a little bit less expensive. You cannot get it in the United States anymore. Um, you can only get it in overseas, I guess. And, um, you know, there are some copycats that are out there of stamp positioner. But I do recommend if you can get your hand on some kind of stamp positioner, which has a hinge door so that you can stamp the same every single time, do invest in one of these. Whether it be the Misty, whether it be the Tim Holtz, um, they're very good. I know there's a new one out with Stampin' Up! called the Stamparatus. The hinge door stamping makes it a lot easier. Yes, I know there's, you know, DIYs you can make your own with the CD case. It does make a difference when you're able to hold that paper down with magnet or double stick tape and get the same stamping every time. So, um, this one is a little bigger. It is a little heavier. I specifically really only use this one for my red rubber cling stamps. Um, but you can flip the door over to the other side and do uh, regular uh, clear stamps instead of just red rubber stamps. So, but I do recommend some kind of stamp positioner if you're, if you're going to be a stamper. Okay. Um, let's see here. Well, what else do you want to talk about? Um, ink blending. Okay, there's a lot of tools out on the market for ink blending. If you want to start getting into techniques, you're going to need some kind of ink blending tools. You want to do stenciling. Um, you want to do backgrounds. I do a lot of galaxy backgrounds. I do a lot of sunset backgrounds clouds. Um, this is where the ink blending tools come in. Hi, Patty. So there are these um, brushes that were out a while ago. These are, I don't know who makes them, Clarity Stamp brushes. They're very 
uh, long bristled soft brushes. These were not cheap. They were $25 for three of them. I got to be honest, guys, they sit in the drawer. I don't use them. They do put down a light coating of ink, but they're just very big. Um, you know, and for me to remember to get them out of the drawer and use them, I mean, I might use them more if they were on top of the desk, but I just find that they're just, I don't know, too big. They just, I don't, I just don't use them. Maybe I can convert them and use them as watercolor brushes or something, but I don't use them. Um, now there's a, there's new companies out that have these blender brushes. There's so many companies that have them now. Um, yes, I think they work great. They put on a little bit of a medium coverage where the clarity brushes are very light coverage. These are a medium kind of coverage. You can get these in different sizes. I bought these at my local Five Below store. They're four or five dollars each. Um, I find that I use the smaller sizes. You can also go on Amazon and buy oval makeup brushes. So I bought a set of oval makeup brushes on Amazon for $13. And it came with all of these, and they have these funky gold handles. But the basic premise is the same. These soft bristles hold on to the ink. Um, they do flex a little bit, and it's just a little easier to hold these and get a soft coverage look on your inks. Um, again, there's a lot of companies out there. If you decide you want to spend $50, $25, it's your money. Do what you want. Um, again, you can get alternatives from Amazon and five below without having to spend that much money. Um, but my, my go-to reliable goes back to my man, Tim Holtz with these distress ink blender tools. Um, these sponges just Velcro on and off. You can change your colors. You can use these with alcohol inks. I used to have the big square ones. I don't buy the big square ones anymore. I've switched to the round ones. And I started out with three or four, and now I have probably a dozen, um, just so all of my major color groups are covered. So I have you know, red, orange, yellow, green, so on. Um, but these are the ones I always go back to. Now, I was at Hobby Lobby today, and Hobby Lobby is carrying these now in their own brand. I think they're the same manufacturer. Um, but these are very easy to hold. You can decide how much pressure you want to put on there. These are the ones I probably use the most. Um, this company, Color Blocks, is no longer going to be selling theirs. So if you can find them, these stylus tools, uh, they are going out of business. These are double-headed um, tools, but they will no longer be carrying these. Okay. Um, let's see here. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Mary. Um, okay. Black inks. Where is this? Yeah, we'll just say black inks and then we'll get into specialty inks. Okay. These are really the only black inks that I use. Okay. There's a lot of ink companies out there. And this is not me saying don't buy certain companies. This is me saying if you're starting on a budget and you need to know what are your absolute must-haves and you don't want to go to Michael's and see that there are six kinds of companies of ink, what should you go with? These are the ones that are tried and true for me. Okay. So the first one, my go-to ink for black, 99.9% .9 is this VersaFine Claire ink. Now this has replaced in my arsenal the old VersaFine ink. Okay. Great ink pad. Has this little papery thing to keep it wet. Very juicy, super crisp, super black ink. However, you do have to give it a moment to dry. Because when you stamp with this ink, it's kind of like a pigment ink. You would think as a stamper, I'd have a stamp available. Come on, dance. Uh, okay. Okay, stamp's great, but it's going to smear. All right. So... This, this ink is pretty much retired in my arsenal. I don't use this one. I still have it, but I don't use it. When people come over and we do stamping crops and stuff, that's when I use it. Um, the VersaFine Claire, what they've done is they, first of all, changed the ink pad. It's a spongier ink pad. I love spongy ink pads. 
It's just my preference. Um, there's uh, Stampin' Up, Catherine Pooler, and these Versafine Claire ink pads or these spongy ink pads. You're still getting that deep, dark black crispness in the ink. However, it's pretty much dried in instantly and you can emboss over this. So if you're going to be doing embossing powder, these inks give you a second to emboss over it and use your like clear embossing powder or whatever you want to do there. Okay. So this, th but this is my go-to black ink for sentiments, for water coloring. 99% um, of my stamping is going to go with this ink. Okay. Um, the other black inks that I use are these other three inks. Now, archival ink is the one I use the least. Archival ink and stays on inks are very similar. However, archival ink is a permanent ink that um, dries pretty quickly and you don't have to worry about it kind of eating into your stamps. It's a permanent ink. Stays on ink is an alcohol based ink. So think about your Sharpie markers, your Copic markers, your alcohol based markers, your Spectrum Noir markers, the new Alta New markers. Those are alcohol based markers. You cannot use this ink with that. Um, this is a more permanent ink for like stamping on say vellum or acetate or something um, non-porous this ink is going to be a permanent ink so I don't use this very much um, yes archival ink yes I would agree with you Anne Marie more for uh, mixed media art so you're going to be painting over it um, you're going to be coloring it in things like that um Memento ink is the only ink I found right now that works for me with alcohol inks. I am on the hunt for a new black ink, which is blacker, that I can use with my alcohol marker. So this is your only alcohol safe ink um, for Copic markers. Um, again, all the markers I just listed, Spectrum Noir markers, the new Altenum markers, anything that's alcohol-based markers. This is the ink that you want to use that will will not move when those alcohol inks hit it. But I am using for looking for. I did try the um, Gina K. I tried the my favorite things. I sent them back, guys. I I don't think that they're good for Copic coloring. This is the best one so far. But to me, this is just not black enough. I want a darker, more black ink for that. Okay. So those are the four that I have for black inks. And I think black is going to be your, your most used color. Um, Linda, you know, I thought about that when I was at the show. I totally forgot to pick up that Raven ink. I tried the Gina K amalgam and that just, it just moved for me. So I guess you got to heat set it. Okay. So while I was cleaning, that's another thing I'll talk about. Um, cleaning stamps. So I used to, keyword is used to, used to be a wipes girl. I used to use wipes all the time. Now, of course, Leo was little, so having wipes around the house wasn't a big deal. I had wipes everywhere. But I have since moved on and learned the error of my ways. I no longer use the wipes. I keep the I keep the wipes on my desk in case I get inky fingers like I have now, but I really don't use the wipes to clean my stamps. I have gone to um, these, these uh, microfiber towels. Now you can get these in your hardware store. They come in all different colors. You can get them in your auto uh, detailing department. I have a whole bunch of these guys. As you can see, they are very well inked and well loved. Um, but they work great. So the first thing is they don't leave any lint. There's no lint on your stamps when you're cleaning with these. Second thing is they're reusable. You use them, they get dirty, you wash them. Okay. Um, the third thing is they don't smell. They don't get musty. They don't stink. I tried this Stampin' Up sponge, which I did use for a while, but it gets dried out. So I had to constantly be wetting it when I was using it. So I really don't use this anymore. I also um, use this close to my heart stamp scrubby. So when I have something very difficult to clean up like stencils or um, very hard to clean ink, like the stays on ink, you take this up and scrub your stamps and it works great. I also use the Hero Arts Ultra Cleaner. Um, 
This stuff works great. I do dilute mine. I do not um, use it straight out of the bottle like this. I put my stuff in a spray bottle and I just put some water in with it. I dilute it and lasts me a long, long time and cleans my stamps great. Okay. Going on with cleaner. Let's see. Okay. In terms of inks, you have to kind of know what kind of inks you like and what kind of inks you don't like. I really can't tell you what's what's good or what's not good for that. Uh, my newest obsession, and it might change as you do your stamping based on what you're doing. My newest obsession, as I told you guys, are these VersaFine Claire inks, and it's because they're light, they're small, they're easy for me to the desk, they're easy to open, they have those spongy pads, the colors are very bright because they're pigment, they sit on top of the ink, um, they sit on top of your paper where dye inks soak down into your paper, so these are very vibrant. And they're not like old day pigment pads where the ink would sit on the paper and then it would take an hour to dry and touched it. That was it. You smudged your project and you weren't going to get it. You know, it was just ruined. Um, these inks dry very quickly. And again, they do wait a second to completely set in so that you have time to heat and boss them. So these have been my new obsession. I have slowly been collecting more and more colors every time I go to the stamp show. Um, I like, again, personally, Stampin' Up! ink pads. That's what I learned to stamp with. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so I do like their ink pads because they're spongy. Um, Catherine Pooler inks are also the same spongy ink pads. I like those. Now, I'm not discriminating. I have, and you guys have seen me use like the mini cubes from Altenew and Hero Arts and mini distress what inks. These they are a great way to build up your stash if you're just starting. They're easy to store. They're easy to take along with you. Um, and I have these. I don't. I only have a handful of the full size Altenew ink pads, but I love having these easy to grab colors right at my fingertips. So I do have mini ink pads as well. But I really don't buy box store brand inks. I don't buy Michael's inks. Um, distress inks, you got to have. If you are just starting out, I would say start your collection with the distress oxides. The distress oxides will do all the techniques. They're bright. There's a lot of colors. You can use them as a pigment ink. You can use them as a dye ink. It's a hybrid kind of ink. Um, you can use them for stamping. You can use them for background. So if you are just starting out, I definitely would recommend starting out with distress oxides. Not distress inks, distress oxides, because it gives you the best of both worlds. And there's a lot of colors and you can do a lot of cool techniques as well as stamp with them. Um, the ultra clean smells to me kind of like um, Windex, really. It's really not... Yeah, it's just like Windex. It doesn't really smell bad. That I think probably that's why I water it down. Um, I have my, my list here. We talked about glue. There's some specialty inks, I would say, as well. Um, specialty inks, I would say, you don't need any specialty embossing inks. You don't need special glue pads. I would just recommend the Versamark ink. If you didn't catch my video on Versamark, I think it's got a hundred thousand views now and all the things you can do at Versamark. I will link that for you. That is the only ink I have for embossing. Um, I don't use any other inks for embossing and other projects. I just use the Versamark ink. Specialty inks um, as well. This is the, uh, the only white Pure white ink pad, I will say, has worked for me, has been the Stampin' Up! White Craft Glue ink. I have tried Hero Arts Unicorn White. I have tried uh, My Monthly Heroes, uh, mon sorry, Hero Arts White ink. I've tried so many companies of white ink, and this is the only one that I've got to come out super white. Now. The downside it is it is a pigment ink. It does, you have to heat set this or what, let this dry. But it is totally worth it. If you want to stamp something on black paper, this white ink really pops. Okay. Um, 
Metallic inks, again, a lot of companies out there, depending on how much sparkle you want. The Delicata ink pads are the best when it comes to sparkling inks. The gold and the silver and now copper are in the new Stampin' Up! catalog. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'll put my link down below for you. Um, but these, I've had the gold ink pad for years and they just stamped so beautiful. The shimmer is... Yeah, even after it dries, it's just so pretty and so amazing. It's a super gold ink. The silver is very, very bright silver. And there's now a copper ink. I love these inks for holiday cards. And I don't have a lot of shimmer inks to me. I'm not going to be stamping out shimmer inks. But when you're doing holiday cards and you're doing sentiments, this gold ink and the silver ink really pop, not only on white paper, but also on dark colored paper. Um, and then for these inks, I do recommend the refills. So the ink pads that I showed you before, the black inks, all of the black inks I recommend refills for. Your specialty inks like the... Versamark I recommend a refill for and these shimmer inks I recommend a refill for because they do tend to dry out and you want to re-ink them especially the stays on ink pads you you want to re-inker for that I don't buy re-inkers for any other of my ink pads unless I know the color is retiring because honestly it's like buying touch-up paint for your car. Uh, as a car dealer, we always say don't buy touch-up paint for your car until you need it because it starts to um, separate in the in the bottle. And, hey, having little bottles of reinkers is cool in case you need it. The reality is you're probably not going to use it. There's a lot of ink that comes in these ink pads. And unless you're teaching classes or you have a lot of people come in your house and you're mass producing 800 cards you're probably not going to go through all of this ink. So I would say unless you, unless you're going to be using it very heavily like black inks or the specialty inks like Versamark, Versamark stays on or gold, I don't recommend buying refills. I, I, unless you're going to do some kind of refill inking project, there are watercolor projects and things like that. It's just another way for you to save money. You really don't need those refills. Or if it's a color that's retiring, if you know it's a color that's not going to be around, then I recommend buying the refill because you may use that color in the future and you, you don't want to be without the refill on that. Okay. Um, a good gold, bone folder. There's lots of companies out out there big bone folders i don't think there's any one that's better than the other um this one came in my mini score buddy i do recommend a mini score buddy it does help to make your cards nicer smoother i use this guy all the time this one came with this little uh self-healing mat which i don't use very often um, but it came with a little score tool uh let's see here Masking. So masking is something we've, we, we, we all like to do, I think, in terms of trying to make cool images. And I have found that when it comes to masking, posted tape is great. It's cheap. Um, you can get it in strips. You can get it in super sticky, full coverage posted tape is what I use. You can buy masking paper if you can find it. These come in sheets. You stamp on the white side, you cut around it. They're usable, are reusable for a couple of times before they lose their stick or they get ink through them. But any of these items will work for masking. You don't have to go out and buy specialty mask paper. You can use what you have with using post-it notes, but I recommend full sticky post-it notes. Um, when it comes to holding dies down, I also use the same post-it roll tape, or I have started to use the purple tape, which is very cool. It's a delicate tape, but again, you can use um, very delicate painter's tape. They have that frog tape out there. Any of those things will work for holding dies down as well. Uh, I do not recommend the masking frisket or uh, this is a fine line masking paper masking fluid you can see that it has gone south it's turned brown I have not used this 
Oh, yes, Patty. Thanks for bringing that up. You want to fold opposite of your score line when you scroll. So this is separated. It smells like fish. Um, I think I used it twice because I was trying to be like Christina Warner and all her watercoloring projects. You can just use masking tape. Ma this stuff just doesn't work. Don't spend your money on it. And I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, I want to talk talk about specialty products. What I mean by specialty products are um, like glitter and paste and stuff like that. I did do a video recently, so I have these out on my desk. So these are all the same thing. These are all glossy accents. So I have a little glossy accent. I have a big glossy accent. I have a close to my heart liquid glass. I have 3D crystal lacquer. And then I have this, which came out of one of the Hero Arts kits. It, it's all the same stuff. You don't need six bottles of the same stuff. You buy one of these, any one of them in a large size, and it will last you forever. I'm not kidding. This is 15 years old. You can tell it has the old design on it. I mean, so I bought a little one. I think this came in one of my kits, actually. But this stuff will last you forever. Great for, number one, gluing down heavy um, embellishments. But number two, putting it on top of your stamped images to make things pop. You want to glue glitter down. Um, you want to just give it a clear, glossy look to it, like you're doing windows or you're doing rain or, you know, so many different projects. But... Again, you don't need six of these like I have. You just need one. And they just all sit in the drawer with the rest of the stuff I don't need six of, like the scissors. Um, you need a good X-Acto knife. You will use that every once in a while. You want to buy one that has changeable blades. I recently picked up this uh, Tonto Crystal Ninja, which is the cheap one, not the $30 one. This one's like $10, I believe. And you just, uh, it's a wax tip. And basically you just sharpen the end when it gets glue or, or dull. But this helps with picking up beads and sequins. But the $10 one is just as good as the $30 one. You want a good black pen or black marker. I always reach for this Slick Rider in Fine. It's what I usually, of course now it's not going to work. It's usually what I write my cards out with and sign. It's a permanent ink, but it's always super dark black. Um, you always want a white gel pen as well. This jelly roll pen has been my go-to. I've gone through 8 million white gel pens. The white jelly roll pen has never failed me. And I've gone to the bigger one, which is point. I think it's 0 0.08. Oh, yeah, it says it on there. 0 0.08. So it never has clogged, never dried out, never not come out. It's never failed me. I've tried 8 million white gel pens, and the Jelly Roll pen is always my winner. Look, here's three of them. Look, and all three of them wrote. So I've gone through a lot of white gel pens. These guys won't let you down. White Jelly Roll. Sakura Jelly Roll pen. I don't know why I have three of them. Um, the yellowing doesn't hurt it, Belinda. It's just from aging. Um, I have tried the new, um, what's that company called? Nuvo. I've tried these, the Nuvo ones in clear, and my clear Nuvo always cracks, so I don't use it anymore. I think I just bought two of these. I did buy two of these. Well, this will go in the giveaway. I was just doing an order today. If you guys read my um, Facebook post, I did order from the Stampin' Up! Christmas catalog, and then I ordered a whole bunch of new Gemini um, foil press, hot foil plates from Craft Stash. And I went to Hobby Lobby today and I got some things and I went to the stamp show this week and got some things. So I kind of was bad with my spending and bought myself a whole bunch of junk. So one of the things I ordered was 
is a new yellow Nouveau glitter drops. I do like these glitter drops. I am not the type of person that makes them ahead of time and I just use them when I need them. And I thought I didn't have a yellow and here I do have a yellow. So I'll put the extra one in the giveaway box. But I do like these Nouveau glitter drops. Um, I stopped using stickles and went to these. I don't think it matters. They both do the same thing, but use the ones that you know you're going to use. I don't have the pastel ones. I don't have the glow and the dark ones. I only use the glitter ones and the gloss one, and I don't have every color. I only have the colors that I know that I tend to use. I think you guys all kind of have a color palette. If you don't have a color palette, I say start with the season that you're in. So we're coming up on Halloween. We're coming up on Christmas season. If you know you're going to make a lot of Halloween or Christmas cards, start with those. You know, do orange, purple, green, or red, green, silver, gold, those kinds of things. Um, so I have maybe a dozen of these. Again, I don't have every color. I don't feel the need to go out and buy every color. I only buy the ones that I, I feel like I'm going to use. Um, what else? Same thing with the glimmer paste and the, the gilding waxes and things like that. Buy what you like. Try one or two, buy what you like. You don't have to own all of them. Yes. I know a lot of us have full set syndrome. Just buy what you like and go back and buy two or three at a time. Yes, September. It is my therapy. September is expensive for. Oh, yeah, I got, got a haul from Simon Says Stamp. Oh, my God, you guys. Oh, I can't even like contain my excitement. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to show you something. Simon Says Stamp. Stamp Timber exclusive. Simon Says Stamp presents Stamp Timber, a month-long stamping party. What I can't show you, but you are going to love it, is there's a Kitchen Sink Stamps collaboration for Stamp Timber. It's going to be on Simon Says Stamp. Because I am part of the Kitchen Sink Stamps design team, I got one of the stamp set, and I am dying that I cannot show it to you guys. It's amazing. So keep an eye out for that. You're all going to want it. I have a feeling this is a stamp set that's going to sell out quickly. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's in my hot little hands. Okay. <laughs> Belinda, yeah. And I like that the, yes, Belinda says she feels like the Nouveau stays dimensional and the stickles go flat. Yes, I agree with that. Um, I'm trying to read you guys' comments. Sorry. Okay. Specialty papers. Okay, this, I don't want it to be a long conversation, but I think it's going to be a long conversation. You need to be picky about your paper. Paper is very expensive. It is not cheap. Face it, we're killing the earth for our hobby. We're making these beautiful cards for people, and you must feel the guilt of that. I want you all to feel guilty with me about killing trees. So, if we're going to do this hobby... And we're going to continue to kill trees for it. We need to make sure we are spending our money in the right place. And paper, <laughs> paper is someplace where I think we overlook. We don't take the time like we do with our inks to make sure we are spending our money in the right place with paper. So I want to talk about the basics of paper real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first and foremost, there are really only two kinds of paper that I stamp on when it comes to my primary stamping, okay? The first one is always going to be my first love, which is the Stampin' Up! Whisper White paper. This is your standard paper. You get 40 sheets in here. Again, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'll put my link down below for you. <laughs> um, this paper is just ultra smooth. It's got a little bit of a kind of a coating to it. When you stamp on this paper, it just sucks up all that ink and you have a clear, crisp image and it just looks great. Okay. You want, yes, yeah, save your scraps. I have a little box on my desk where the scraps go. You know, even the tiniest little piece, 
you 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 can use you can stamp a sentiment on there. You can cut it out. This is actually foil paper that you can use as a border. So you want to stay save those scraps. Okay. The second company that I use is the Nina Solar White Invest in the Ream. Okay. This is not plain Jane regular paper. This is the holy grail of stamping paper. You do not just go to the store and say, I'm going to stamp on typing paper. I'm going to stamp on uh, whatever they have at Walmart. It's not the same. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to write this down because you guys need to, to understand. This took me a long time to accept. I was like, I am not spending $30 on paper. Oh, yes, you are. If you want your stamped images to look good. And I believe this is 80 pound. My label kind of fell off. I think it's 80 pound. Okay. You buy a big ream like this, it lasts you forever. Hi, Terry. It's okay. Better late than never. Okay. So this paper between these two companies, this is going to be your primary stamping, um, uh, what do you call it? Focal image. Okay. That you want to invest in good paper. So I would say Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound. It's not the same Nina that's in Walmart. Not even close to the same. Don't try to be cheap. It's not going to work. Okay. Just, just buy the paper. There are companies that sell it in smaller batches. Um, hold on. I think this one was for from just for fun stampers. They basically go and buy big reams of it and they package for you. Okay. It's the exact same stuff. All right. So for your main focal image, please, 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 crafters, get yourself some Stampin' Up! Whisper White or get yourself some Nina Solar White. You don't have to buy a big ream of it, but you want to make sure that it's it will make a difference in your stamping and how you feel about your stamped images when you use good quality paper. Okay. Now, for card bases, you can go cheap on card bases. I'm not going to lie. I use cheap card base. For card bases, I generally only use, most of the time, white or black. Okay. Um, this is from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby lets you use a 40% off coupon. Or they have, right now it's 40% off everything Paper Studio. Because I was there earlier today. You want heavy weight cardstock. So this is the Paper Studio. It says heavyweight. It's a thick cardstock that I use for my guard. I'm not stamping on my card bases, so I don't care what it stamps like as long as it holds up. This is 110 pound black cardstock from Recollections, which is Michael's brand. Okay, so you want to look at the weight. You want 100 or 110 pound heavyweight um, cardstock for your card bases. And look, I buy, I buy big chunks of this because... The card base just needs to hold up. Now, I did splurge and buy myself some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock in 110 pound from all my special people. Um, but really, you, you don't have to buy the Nina on this. I, I buy heavyweight cardstock, and you want to make sure you know it's going to be heavyweight. There are companies that say heavyweight, and it's not heavyweight. So, like, this is 65 pound uh, recollections paper. This is not heavyweight. This is, this is not going to make a good card base. It's flimsy. It's like a wet handshake people. We need heavy duty card bases. Don't use the flimsy paper. Flimsy paper is good for matting. When you have your focal image, which you've stamped on good paper, and then you want to mat that or frame it, then you can use the flimsy color paper. 
because then that goes on your good heavy cardstock. So it's sandwiched in the middle. Nobody's going to know you used your cheapy paper for matting and for, for, for framing. Okay. That's fine. Go ahead and use it for that. We have all splurged and did the 1999 for 800 pieces of colored paper. Sure. I'm going to need that. Hey, no shame in that. It's on sale. Buy it, but make sure you use it. So use that flimsy color paper in between your cards. All right, get this off the desk. Okay. Of course, there are specialty papers. There are papers that I do like to splurge. Um, I do like heavy duty colored cardstock that I reach for all the time. These just happen to be stamping up. I use navy blue all the time. Navy blue and black I go through a lot of. So I do buy specialty paper. Stampin' Up has great paper. Hero Arts has great paper. There's a lot of good companies out there that have great paper. I have tried Gina Kay's paper. Her paper is very nice as well. So you have nice companies out there. We do specialty products like Yupo. So there's a lot of companies now that offer Yupo because Yupo has become very popular with um, go um, alcohol inks right now. So here's an example. Here is $9.99 at Hobby Lobby, five by seven Yupo sheets, and there are 10 pieces in here. I paid the same $10 for the large Yupo paper, 10 sheets at an art store, and I get 10 sheets that I can make 40 card fronts out of this. So just keep an eye out. You don't have to buy what's in the card maker section. Go to the art section. Go to your art stores. You can go to Dick Blick. You can go to Hobby Lobby. And you can get the exact same stuff, maybe even better quality, for cheaper. Don't fall into the it's a card maker trap. Okay? You're artists. On that same note... Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper, great for blending, great for doing smooth scenes. This is a super extra smooth paper. Um, if you're going to be using the watercolor markers, like the Arteza markers, the Zig markers, this is the paper you want to use. Super smooth. Strathmore Bristol Paper, 20 sheets at 100 pounds. Or this was at AC Moore. 100 pounds, 24 sheets. This was half the price. Works just as good. This is the Nicole brand. Just as smooth. Okay, so sometimes you got to try stuff out to see if it's really worth it or not. Same thing with watercolor paper. Same thing with, um, you know, mixed media paper. Stuff like that. So you just got to try it out and see if it's worth it or not. Once you find something that works, use it. If something's not working for you, try something else. Okay. All right. So real quick, I know we're running out of time here because I gotta take the boy home. Nancy, your red pickup looks great. Scrappy ball. I know it does, doesn't it? I just did that's on the mod squad challenge. If you guys haven't gone over there, that's going on this week. Mod squad challenge.com. It's make a scene and you could win $25 from Kitchen Sink Stamps if you enter your card. So head on over. You have all weekend to do that before I randomly pick a winner next week for the $25 Kitchen Sink Stamps. Um, GSM reflects the actual weight of one sheet of paper cut. And, oh, that's I did not know that. So, yeah, the heavier the GSM. And I think that's what the Europeans use to measure. There's like 100 pound paper to us is 300 GSM. Um, overseas. Yeah, the heavier the paper, the, the stiffer it is, correct? Great for 3Ds. Yes, I would also recommend you when you do die cuts to use better quality, heavier paper. Um, the other thing I recommend is having some kind of double adhesive tape when you're doing the die cutting that you can put this double adhesive tape behind it. Um, it's just it's good stuff to use, either that or stick it or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to make a real quick list of things I don't buy. I have my little list here. I've been crossing it off. So one of the things I said I don't buy anymore is wipes. Um, acrylic blocks. I, I do have quite a few acrylic blocks. Again, 
You don't need every size, shape, color of acrylic blocks. Most of these I've amassed from coming. They came free with stamp sets when I first started out. But um, once you have a stamp positioner, you're going to find you use your acrylic box less. You don't need a whole bunch. You, you probably just need three or four of them. So I don't buy those anymore. One of the things I find myself not buying anymore is silicone stamps. Now, you guys know I have a pet peeve with silicone stamps. So if there's a stamp I really like and it happens to be silicone, I will um, try to condition it by using the Versamark ink on it first and then stamping with a good pigment ink like the Versaclair inks. But I really, really try not to buy silicone stamps. If I see a stamp out there and I don't absolutely love it, oops, and I find out that it is silicone, I will nine out of 10 times put it back. There's, there's really, there's no love for me and silicone stamps. So I just don't buy them. I find that I can find that stamp somewhere else, not as silicone. And on that note, I do not buy any stamps from Ally, um Express for that reason, because they are still, and they are made with silicone. They are not photopolymer stamps, completely different conversation, different video. Um, Wooden stamps. I don't buy these anymore, guys. I mean, once in a blue moon, I might go buy a wooden stamp, but I find myself buying unmounted stamps. Um, like these Blue Knight rubber stamps. They are, they are they're cling mounted, but they're red rubber stamps. I still buy red rubber stamps, but I buy them cling mounted. So like these always come on these backing so I will buy these, but I, I, if I have a choice, I will not buy wooden stamps. If I do, do buy wooden stamps, most of the time I will unmount them. Um, I will take the stamp off of the block, this one here, and then I will store this on a stamp sheet or in a stamp binder. Um, if I have to put new um, stamping foam on it, I will, and then the block blocks go to the kids to play with. I, I really don't use wooden blocks anymore. I don't, they just take up a lot of space and I just don't do it anymore. Uh, punches. I don't buy punches anymore. Um, nowadays with the stamp companies, you can usually get matching dies or SVG files. A lot of you have invested in the brother scan and cut. Um, I have a silhouette machine so I can scan and cut my stamps that way as well. So I really don't buy punches anymore. I do buy dies. I don't buy punches anymore. Um, cheap stickers and cheap paper. I don't buy that anymore. Um, cheap stickers, unless they're dimensional, I usually can just make it myself by cutting out a die and making it. So cheap stickers and cheap paper, I do not buy anymore. I very rarely buy pattern paper anymore unless I know I'm going to use it. Uh, regular embossing powders. What I mean by that, if it's not a specialty embossing powder with glitter um, or something cool, like it's color shifting or glow in the dark or puff, I don't buy regular embossing powders anymore because you can just emboss over your stamped image with clear embossing powder and it it looks great. So I don't do that. I definitely don't buy brads and eyelets anymore. I don't use them. I don't buy them. Again, I don't buy the funky, cool scissors anymore. Um, I don't buy washi tape. I don't use it, so there's no point in me buying it. I very rarely buy ribbon. I do have some ribbon, but I very rarely buy ribbon. Um, and then the last thing I have on my list is um, use what you have. If you find a company that you like, for example, I like the Altenew Mini Inks. And I make a list every time I go to try to increase my all to new collection. So like I have the reds, I have the pinks, I have oranges, yellows, greens, blues, one of their grays, some purples. I don't have every single color. I only have about six of them in large, but I use what you have. Never should you watch a video and that includes any of my videos and feel obligated to have something unless you've tried it or it's something you don't have, you probably have something in your stash that's very similar. We all have to start somewhere, and I think most of us have a budget, and if you don't have a budget, I want to be your best friend. Um, <laughs> I want to be all your friends anyway, but if you don't have a budget, for example, I have a ton of these Spectrum Noir markers. I don't do a lot of alcohol coloring. These markers have done fine by me. I have the Arteza markers. There's no refills available for these markers. That's okay. I'm not a professional artist. 
I do have some Copic markers. I dabble. I buy one or two here and there. I only just bought my first two Copic market marker refills. They're both brown. Um, I don't have any refills for any of my Copic markers. That's it. So use what you have. If I do a video and I'm using something and you feel that you, you know, it's something you absolutely want to have and you want to ask me questions like the, the mink machine, the foil press machine, call me, email me. I will answer your questions before you go out and make an investment into buying $500 in foil and find out you're, you know, you're, you're not going to like it. You're not going to use it or something like that. Um, let's see here. Um, different brands of ink, paper, pencils, markers, paints, etc. We have all fallen into the trap of something new, right? So as you guys know, Arteza sponsors me a lot. They've sent me um, Copic marker, sorry, alcohol markers. They sent me colored pencils, watercolor pencils, paints, markers. Um, I love the majority of their things. As a crafter, they come out with the right price point. They come out with a lot of things that I reach for over and over and over again. Don't feel obligated to buy these things if you have something that already works in your arsenal. These color pencils are no better or no worse than the color pencils you have. It's in your practice and how you feel confident in using them. So the Zig markers. I have a handful of Zig markers. My Arteza markers have taken over for Zig markers. They're cheaper. They're just as easy to use on Bristol cardstock. I get a wide array of colors and I don't feel like I'm pinching my pocketbook when I buy it, these markers like I am with the Zigs. Okay. So my last advice would be use what you have. Don't feel obligated to go out there and buy something name brand. Again, the Misty tool is a nice tool. It's a $60 investment. I think it's worth that investment. You may not have that right now in your budget. Put it on your Christmas list. Start out with something else. Start out with maybe the Tim Holtz tool or um, DIY. You, you know, so just think about those things when you're when you are out shopping and investing. You buy what you think you're going to use. Um, I want to give you guys an example. I went, as you guys know, this summer to Virginia with the kids, and. Whenever I see anything kind of like scrapbook, I, I snatch it up. <laughs> Shame on me. I have not scrapbooked in probably three years. Like Le Xavier's scrapbooks are 10 times more and nicer than Leah's scrapbooks because I stopped scrapbooking since I got into card making. So I'm kind of like ticked at myself that I bought these cool papers for um, – Virginia, and I just turned around and they were on my desk and still in the bag. Haven't used them. Bought myself these cool pens and inks because I am a stationary junkie and haven't used them. So I need to be more conscious of where I'm spending my money and, and, buying things that I just have an obsession for buying and I'm not going to use them. So buy things you're going to use. Don't just go out and get impulsive and buy stuff. And then you're going to regret it. Buying stuff on TV. Um, you know, when you're shopping around the websites, make a list. So just to give you a story last night, I need to buy a specific type of dye for this new kitchen sink stamps release. Okay. I can't tell you what it is. Um, you're going to love it. So I went on Simon says stamp. And I searched for this particular die. And of course, while I was online, it was too easy to click, put in the basket, put in the basket, put it in the basket, put in the basket. And last night I probably had about a hundred things in the basket. Well, then you got to pay shipping and handling, which is eight bucks, right? I don't think there's a coupon right now because it's stamp timber. So I was like, holy crap, a hundred dollars in the basket. I did not buy anything. I closed out my window today. I went to Hobby Lobby and was looking around for that particular die or something similar I could use. I didn't find it. Um, however, I went back into Simon Says Stamp, sent me an email that said, hey, you forgot stuff in your basket. So I went back into the basket and I deleted half of the things in the basket because I thought about it and said, I don't need half of the things I put in the basket. 
One of those things was yellow stickles, which I didn't need, but now I have two. I mean, uh, Nouveau drops. But anyway, my point is carry an inventory book. Know, know what you have before you go buying stuff. Decide, is it worth me buying it? Am I going to use it? Not, oh, this would be cool and I might use it. Think of project ideas where you're actually going to use it before you spend the money. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys my real quick haul video here, what I got at Hobby Lobby today. Um, because these are all, these are going to go in some giveaway items. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers. I thank everybody for joining us tonight. This video is way over. So we're going to make this real quick and then I got to call it a night. So these are some things I bought to put in the giveaways. As you guys know, I have some blue night rubber stamp stuff going in the giveaway. I have creative vision stamp stuff going in the giveaway. Um, I got a lot of stuff. I mean, it's 10,000 subscribers. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. All right. So um, I got these fall 3D leaves. Oh my gosh. It goes so cute with this guy. Oh, okay. Anyway, he just happened to be. Oh, I got some sunflower stickers. These were cool. These are like, like wooden dimensional stickers. They're not. I don't think they're cardboard. I think they're wood. So I got some of those. Somebody's going to win a Marvy snow marker. You guys love this. And I know it's hard for you guys to find. So somebody's going to get that. I got these uh, little house. Um, they're just little houses. Sink. They're kind of like puffy stickers, but they're very cute. A lot of design in here. Like there's a wreath on the door. Little nutcracker guy. This one has a wreath and a bow. And they, there's gold around the window. So I just thought they were super cute. Um, I got some white poinsettias. They're white glitter. I got some red glitter poinsettias. Some more sunflowers. And look at these snowflakes. These are also wooden um, snowflakes. So Hobby Lobby has 40% off all of their um, Christmas decorations right now. So I picked up all of these things to do in our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And I just wanted to show that with you guys. So that's the end of my video. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Linda. I have to take Xavier to his dad's. He has school tomorrow morning, but I was making a list of these things. I'm sure more things will pop up. If you have any questions about anything I use, please post it down below. If you like this video, I always appreciate your thumbs up. Again, it is the Stampin' Up! Christmas catalog. So if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'll link my Stampin' Up! Um, site for you guys down below. I did pick up a couple things out of this catalog, so I'm waiting for that to come. I will have a craft stash haul with the Gemini foil press dies that I got and um, some new goodies from Simon Says Stamp as part of the Kitchen Sink Stamps collaboration. And don't forget, head on over to the Mod Squad channel challenge and create a scene card. You have all weekend to do that. I will randomly pick a winner next week and you could win $25 gift card to Kitchen Sink Stamps. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you guys for sticking through it and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.